All right, and welcome back to Raul's World of Synths. I am Raul. This time around, we're going to be looking at a demonstration of some of the things that we talked about in the previous demonstration, or uh, discussion, I should say, um, regarding the A106-1 Extreme Filter. Um, so we're going to be looking at some of the basic things like cutoff and uh, resonance, and then also kind of a mixture of the two things uh, when it comes to the two filters right here that we talked about last time around. Uh, but to do this, uh, we're going to need some audio uh, sound sources coming in. Um, I have some stuff set up already. Um, I had a little bit of prior work here to get this patch going. Uh, so I'm going to go over kind of basically what I have. But here, take a look at the bottom section here. I have a patch going on with a involving a standard VCO A110 phase lock loop. I have a VCA set up. I have an envelope generator being triggered uh, by my sequencer. And then I have a mix output over here that's going to be going up to the extreme filter. Um, and then immediately above that, I have a second envelope right here that is going to be triggered by my sequencer as well. So let's go over to the A155 because that's where all of this is actually going to start. And uh, we'll talk about the patch itself, and then we'll get into the audio demonstration. So I'm going over to my A155 analog trigger sequencer. Uh, and there's uh, three cables actually patched out from this module here. Uh, the top section, uh, my trigger output 1, is actually going out, if I follow this cable, all the way over to my envelope generator in the bottom row over here by my oscillator. And then the output of that is actually going to control the A131 VCA here. Um, this is actually controlling the shape of my audio coming from my A110. Uh, so I have my patch cables running into here. So this is one of them, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's going to be my saw out going into my VCA right here. And then the other one I have running into that is a sine wave, if I can see that correctly, sine wave going into audio N2 of my VCA. And then the output of that is running over here into my mixer right there. And then this is going to be right here what is going to be going out to my A106 filter up here at the top. Um, in case you notice down here at the A110, there's also a second uh, patch cable coming from the pulse out right here. Uh, this is actually going over into the phase locked loop module we haven't gotten into yet uh, this time around, or this season around, I should say. Uh, but that signal is actually going into here. And then I have my square out from there, which I'm going to be possibly patching maybe a little bit later. Uh, but I have my regular phase comparator output here patched over into my mixer, and I'm getting a blend of my standard uh, two wave forms being blended here and my phase lock loop uh, phase comparator signal being fed into here. So there's a blend of the two right there. Uh, and then that output, as I said, is going to be going up into my A106 extreme filter. Now, the only other uh, cable in question here, if I go back to my A155, is my post out. Uh, my post out from my A155 is actually going over into my A110 right here. And uh, that's triggering the pitch of the standard VCO, uh, which is then, of course, going out. My output's here, going into phase lock loop, as well as the VCA over here. So quick review, just for myself as well as you guys. Uh, trigger output 1 on the A155 is going over to the envelope in the lower section right here. Trigger output 3, uh, if I didn't mention it already, is going out and then up and then up into the middle section, getting this envelope here, just for a special effect, which we'll hear a little bit later when we do uh, modulation of this module. Um, but that's the setup of the patch. 
So without further ado, let's get right into the demonstration. So I'm going to take my output here from my mixer, which is mixing my phase lock loop signal and my VCA signal, and I'm going to patch it up into my low pass in my filter. So that's my uh, filtered sound. I already have my CV being patched over there and everything. And then if I look at my middle section, my envelope um, is going to be used a little bit later on when I start modulating my filter cut off right now. Uh, but for now, we're going to actually just do a basic demonstration with, with this sound without any modulation going into CV input one or two. So there you go. Uh, so cut off, let's just do cut off real quick. So we can get familiar with the character of this module. Okay. Uh, now I do have my clipping settings kind of adjusted already. So let me bring those down to zero. And we'll do a true test of just our uh, low pass filter. I have my low pass all the way to the max. My high pass should be at zero, but if I'm unsure if that's at zero, I can always patch a dummy cable in here, which I will do. There we go. So right there, we should have only low pass. And again, my dummy cable is not being patched anywhere. It's just kind of hanging there. Uh, so right now I should have low pass only. So if I bring down the cutoff, close the filter, bring it up basic low pass filter okay everything's pretty normal so far uh, over at the resonance I can adjust my resonance higher but you can hear that it's not quite distorting the way you're normally accustomed to a filter getting when you bring the resonance all the way to the top but you can hear kind of a little squelch right there I don't know if you can hear that hopefully you can But now if I want to enhance this, um, I can sort of add a little mixture of my high pass filter in. Uh, so let me unpatch my dummy cable here. And now I can add maybe some of the positive variety of my high pass filter. Let me adjust my cutoff a little. And there I'm starting to get some more interesting results. Uh, just so we can hear it a little bit better, I'm going to actually bring the positive clipping level up a little bit. Because that will bring my maximum output out as well. And now you can hear that I am getting a substantial amount more of maximum output. So now I can bring my low pass down a little bit. I can bring my high pass up a little bit. Can adjust my cutoff. And I can blend the two filters however I want to. So we looked at low pass only. Let's take a look at high pass only. So I'm going to unpatch this, no sound. And now I'm going to patch into high pass only. And let me actually bring low pass down. Although I don't really have to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm going to patch in, and there's high pass only. I'm going to bring the resonance down a little bit. So right there is the high pass only variety. Adjust that a little bit. Now here I can still adjust my clipping, positive clipping level, or my negative clipping level. Um, one thing you'll notice though when I had this patch a little bit earlier, is here I get the maximum level of my high pass input, for a very kind of thin, tinny sound. But if I bring it over into the opposite direction, it sounds very similar. Now, I'm not 100% sure because I didn't pull out the oscilloscope to compare the two, uh, but when uh, there is a mention in the manual about the high-pass uh, 
when used by itself, uh, that, you know, the polarity does not have an effect, which may actually be the case here because that's what my ears are hearing. When it's at zero, I pretty much am not getting any signal out of my output. But if I bring it up all the way this way, I get my high pass filtered sound. And if I bring it all the way in the negative direction, it's almost identical. So I think that's what's going on here, although I did, as I said, I did not bring out the oscilloscope to compare that. So hopefully I'm not misinforming you, but if I am, then just kind of post a comment or something like that, and uh, I'll be more than happy to do a little update to that, uh, to this demonstration. So that's the, uh, that's the high pass in, and then we did a little bit of the low pass in. Uh, so let's actually do a little bit of high pass here. I'm going to take my output out and then go over into my low pass in again. And we bring my low pass in. But before I do, I wanted to just point this out. Uh, you notice that right now all we're getting is high pass in. So if I bring this up, we have that kind of high pass sound that we had a moment ago when we were patched into high pass in. So you can achieve the same result or similar result uh, by patching into low pass in and then just bringing the low pass level all the way down. Uh, it's not really necessary to patch into here to use only the high pass filter. You can actually do it by patching into there. And since it is going to both, you can, you know, get the same effect. So you can hear high pass filtered there. And then over on this side, high pass filtered. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, let's bring up our low pass a little bit just to get kind of a, a sound that I like here. And let's start about there. Okay, now we're gonna bring up our clipping level. All the way to the max. And this is the positive clipping level, keep in mind. The CL plus. And now let's experiment a little bit with the CL minus as well. We're going to be achieving some very interesting distortion type effects here very shortly. There we go. And if I bring my resonance up. So that's kind of in that self oscillation range. However, as you can hear, it's not quite a uh, distinct sine wave that we're hearing. We're actually hearing kind of those little short pulses. So right here in this little interesting range, I can bring my clipping level down and achieve some very interesting type distorted type effects. So it almost sounds like it's going not only through a filter, but it's also going through some kind of distortion as well. And then, of course, I can go back and adjust my high-pass amount. If I want to bring back over in my negative high-pass variety, I can. Or if I want to bring down my low-pass, adjust my resonance. It's very sensitive in some of the areas, like where you can get some almost too distorted type sounds, like where it just starts breaking up. See, like right there? It's extremely distorted, almost very indistinct from the original, or mostly distortion rather than... So let's just listen to that for a moment. But it's a pretty fun filter because you can achieve some not only interesting distortion effects, but very interesting combinations of filter effects as well. Um, let's see if we can achieve kind of the... Uh, the pseudo bandpass. And I think the setting I had a little while ago was like about at one. I had my low pass set, and then my high pass was set to about a 10. And then my resonance was kind of low. So it's kind of the bandpass, or pseudo bandpass, I guess, where the bass kind of drops off, and then the high kind of drops off, and then you kind of have that one little narrow section that's actually passing through. Um, now the notch filter is a little bit 
the opposite direction. It's a little harder to dial in, at least in my experiments. But um, I've kind of used this as a kind of a guide. Like once I achieve this as my sort of pseudo bandpass, um, I sort of concluded that maybe at about the opposite settings that I could get it. But when I tried the opposite direction, like let's say low pass here, high pass, exact the opposite, I didn't quite get a band pass anymore. See that to me sounds more like a uh, more like a notch filter there. Although of course it wouldn't be a perfect notch filter, it would be sort of a pseudo notch filter. Now that's actually not a bad notch filter. So just a couple of ways that you can use it. Um, and I think I just kind of happily uh, landed into that uh, pseudo notch filter. I wasn't actually trying to do that. Because uh, again, it says, you know, about the polarity of the signals. Uh, but you really have to use your ears a little bit more uh, when using this one to dial in the right sound that you want to get. Um, now, we kind of went through the basic cutoff. And then we went into a little bit of just the low pass. And then after that, we did a little bit of high pass, uh, mixing with low pass, as well as high pass all by itself. Um, we did a little bit of a demonstration of the clipping setting here, all the way into the max, and then achieving some of those kind of crazy distortion effects, kind of like that. And then we also did a little bit of a demonstration of the resonance. So, in the next segment, we're going to actually look a little bit more in depth at some modulation of these settings, um, and possibly, possibly, uh, maybe even doing a little bit of inserting into the resonance over here. Uh, I'll see if I can get that sort of arranged so we can do that. Um, so. Thanks for watching for this particular audio demonstration. Uh, keep on patching out there, and hopefully we'll see you shortly. Thanks for watching.